Paradise by the Death Board Light by Linda Jo Jennings. Tubular bondage in the back seat, 55 miles per hour in an unmoving car. Innocence lost on beer stained vinyl. Green light gives way to yellow. Caution. Watch out! You run my red light! Agony. Misery. Bliss. Awakening. My very own love canal. Bad Joni Mitchell on AM. 92.5. Was it good for you? Was I even there? Help me. I think I'm falling in love with you. Thank you. Wow, that was refreshing. Thank you, Linda Joe. Uh, it's getting pretty late, so if no one else wants Wild to recite. Wild nights. Wild nights. Wild nights. Where I would be. Wild nights should be. Our luxury. Futile the winds to a heart in port. Done with the compass, done with the charts. <gasps> Rowing in Eden. Ah, the sea. Might I but moor tonight in thee? My heartfelt thanks to Emily Dickinson. Thank you, class. That's all for now. So, how about it then? I already have a date, Charlie. Come on, but you love Potter. Really? How do you know? I know. Well, you're wrong. Henry is <clears throat> overly ambitious, a little plastic, lacking a soul. Completely trustworthy. Aren't you ever going to forgive me? Do you know why I left you? Yes. If you think it's the girl, you're wrong. What was it then? You changed. Writing that book did something to you. What exactly? I mean, am I supposed to guess? Why don't you just try thinking about it? I, I will, I promise. But unless you talk to me, how will I know when I figure it out? Oh, Charlie. All right, you win. If you like, we can grab a bite to eat sometime. There, does that make you happy? Ecstatic. Oh, good. Well, good night. Okay, good night. Sweet dreams. Mm. Got a minute, Lattimore? Never you mind. It's about this assignment of yours. Don't you think you're pushing it a little bit? I can just see next year's catalog. Come to Hampstead. Get your first, second, and third degree in murder. Huh? Is that what's really bothering you? Laura told me you two spoke last night. We were married for over 10 years, Henry. I'm not going to give her up without a fight. Yeah, well, you do what you have to, Lattimore. There's just one thing you should know. What's that? I never lose. That's funny. I thought you were going to say something human, like how much you love Laura. <laughs> I'm going to make your life very difficult, Charles. Yeah. That might interest you. Good characters are haunted by the past, just as real people are. They have personal problems unrelated to the plot, just as real people do. Broken love affairs, bankruptcies, shameful deeds they want to forget. The most powerful plots are based on characters in conflict with themselves. Usually, it's the internal conflict, the tug of war that goes on inside a character that makes a story more compelling. 
forget me nots. Your favorites. Believe me, Charlie, I've long since forgotten. Uh, what about lunch? Hmm? Charlie, we've already had lunch twice this week. Don't you have any work to do? I got all your favorites. I have to grade these papers before tomorrow. And besides, I brought my own lunch. Oh, it's a shame about all those papers you have to sign, isn't it? Let me see, what are you eating these days for lunch? Mmm, smells delicious. Mm. Oh, yummy, 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 yummy. Mm. Mm. You're too much. I thought you were too busy for lunch. There's more than enough for three. Would you care to join us? Hmm? When plotting a suspense story, it's a good idea to start with the double strand. The crime filament and the man-woman relationship. The possibility of romance always gives a story an added element of suspense. Sex and love provide the most <laughs> common motive for murder. Ooh. You want to constantly place a series of little questions in your reader's mind. What will so-and-so do next, the reader should ask. One of the worst mistakes you can make as a mystery writer is leave all your revelations for the last page. When the reader finally finds out who the villain is, you should have left enough clues along the way for him to say, sure, why not? At the same time, you can't make your mystery too transparent. It's impossible to overstate the importance of research to a writer. Murder becomes much more believable when it is rooted in a sense of reality. My old friend Tilden here has agreed to let us watch an autopsy. How did he die? Uh, it looks like a suicide. He jumped out the bedroom window of his apartment. What is that? That's glass. From the window? Uh, this glass is from the bifocals. They found a pair near the body. This means it probably wasn't suicide. Uh. Well, most suicides take off their glasses before they jump. I mean, you really don't want 20-20 vision at a time like that. That's right. Uh, which is an indication that we have to look a little closer. Very good, Robert. Oh. Professor Lanaby. Yes. I forgot this. Your wife asked me to give it to you. Charlie. Mike. Mike, where were you? Sorry, I'm late. There was a hold up at a convenience store. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. Tilden's autopsy was enough for one day. Oh, but I had my speech all planned. Listen to this. First thing you got to do is forget everything this guy Lattimore has told you, because it's a bunch of bull. <laughs> You're Lieutenant Dowling, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, Mike, this is Robert Miner, the student I was telling you about. Oh, right, the one that thinks writer's innocent. So, how's your investigation going? Well, did you know that Mrs. Ryder was planning to leave her husband? No, no, no. She was cheating on him, that's why he killed her. Well, she took a lease on an apartment in town. Really? Yeah, I spoke to the apartment manager. I, I saw the lease. I just don't remember reading about that in the report. Hey, kid's on the ball. Well, it just makes Ryder's motive even stronger. She wants to leave, he just tries to stop her. If he did it. <laughs> okay. How do you explain the autopsy files being in the Ryder house? I think somebody planted them there. Ah, see, we're doing all right up until then. That's far too speculative. Ryder's prints were never found on those files. Gloves. And that is the only prints the police ever found belong to Professor Lattimore. Uh-oh. Oh, Looks like I arrested the wrong guy. Uh, Come Mike, on, I hate to break things up here, but I have to get back to the office. Can you give me a lift? Well, it depends. Handcuff you to the cage. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to accuse him. He was teasing, Robert. He was teasing. Yeah. Stop it. Come on. Let's hey, go. Good meeting you. Good luck. Thanks. Hey. 